Hello everybody, what is going on? Steggy here with a video review of the Avermedia Game Broadcaster HD Capture Card. Now, since people made the plunge into HD capturing and streaming a few years back, there have been two brands that have sort of reigned supreme, Blackmagic and Hoppage, with the Intensity Pro and the Hoppage HD PVR. Now, the HD PVR is for general computers that didn't have a lot of power under the hood, like you know, laptops and everything. The Blackmagic Intensity Pro was the top of the line capture card. You know, it needed to be in a desktop with RAID arrays and everything. And these two capture cards were the most popular that people chose with. They totally inherited the world from the dazzles that we used to use back in Halo 2. And while these capture cards were great, they did have their limitations. And the most prevalent were two things, resolution and connectivity. For starters, if you went with the HD PVR, it has component-only inputs, which means that if you want to play in VGA, you're going to have to spend hundreds of dollars in adapters to get it to work, because component is really shitty for competitive gaming. With the Blackmagic Intensity, you could either do component or HDMI. Now, while HDMI is good, the fact that the Blackmagic Intensity Pro and the Hoppage HD PVR can only do 1080i, this also isn't good for competitive gaming. So up until now, gamers have had to figure out workarounds for these limitations, and these setups could cost hundreds of dollars more than the capture cards themselves, which isn't great for a gamer's wallet. Now while these two capture card companies were the most popular, they weren't the only ones around. Avermedia started making a name for itself about a year ago, because like the Blackmagic Intensity Pro, it provided HDMI recording at 1080i, but over $100 cheaper. Now the only problem is that the Avermedia software wasn't as capable as the Blackmagic software, which is why the Blackmagic Intensity Pro was still so popular. But if you fast forward today, Avermedia's got a new capture card, the Game Broadcaster HD. Now this capture card has a couple of firsts, which is really great. Number one, it can capture an HDMI, VGA, or component. And number two, it can capture 1080p 30 frames per second video, while every other capture card out there is limited to 1080i. So how does this capture card compare with the competition? Do we have a new heir to the throne? Well, that's what we're here to find out. Alright, so let's kick this review off with the prices of the Game Broadcaster HD and its competition. The Game Broadcaster HD retails for $150 right now, while the Hobbage HD PVR sells for $170, and the Blackmagic Intensity Pro sells for $190. I just checked these prices on Amazon today, and they should still hover around those prices. So the Avermedia is currently the cheapest of the three capture cards that I'm talking about in this review. But how does it perform? Well, let's also go over power. Now, the Hobbage HT BVR is by far the least power consuming machine out there. It does a lot of the work inside, so you don't need that strong of a computer. You can even use a laptop with this because it is a USB capture card. While the Blackmagic Intensity Pro and the Game Broadcaster HD are both PCIe capture cards, which means you actually have to install them in your desktop tower. However, while it might seem like a daunting task, it's really not that hard to open up your case, pop in the PCI card, screw it in, put back on your case. A lot of the gamers who like to do live streaming have custom built computers, so if you put together your computer, you should have no problem taking it apart and just adding one more toy and then putting the lid back on. So after you install the Game Broadcaster's disc, you're already set to go to capture. As long as you have your system plugged into the capture card, you turn it on and it'll basically recognize it right away, you do not have to do a lot of fiddling with this program. Now this program is great because it's simplistic, but it's not so great because the simplicity kind of detracts from how much you can actually tweak. Now the Blackmagic Intensity Pro, you can change everything you want about the video, the bit rates and like the very finite details, and that's how you get the most out of your quality, in addition to letting you actually uh, capture an uncompressed quality, but that requires the rated drives, which adds a lot to the cost. Moving on to the inputs of the Game Broadcaster HD, you have three options for it. You have VGA, Component, or HDMI. Now, Component is just all around terrible for competitive gaming. Uh, it's limited to 1080i in your resolution anyways, and it's just not good for input lag. Now, if you've ever seen any of my guides on the MLG forums, I go over a lot of input lag stuff with TVs. And basically, if you've ever played on a big screen TV and, you've ever, and if you've ever noticed how you press a button and it takes a little bit before you actually see that response on the screen, that's input lag. And this affects competitive gamers a lot when you're playing at that high level of play. And a lot of things actually affect input lag, including the connections that you choose. And Component, I just don't recommend it at all. You get the little adapter from Avermedia, but I honestly wouldn't use that if I were you. You're buying this because it's got the availability of VGA or HDMI. Now, HDMI versus VGA is really interesting because this is something I've gone over on the MLG forums quite a lot. Now, 
if you're playing on an HD TV, there's image correction going on that makes the signals that you send to it look better, but in turn, this adds to input lag. This happens with component and HDMI. So if you're playing on an HD TV, which basically anything with a coaxial cable input in the back, that's what we can classify as an HD TV, you want to play in VGA because that bypasses the image correction and it doesn't have as much input lag that way. It's not going to have zero input lag, but it's going to have less, it's not going to have that stuff added to it like HDMI or component would. Now with a monitor, this doesn't have any image correction. So VGA or HDMI will both achieve the same input lag. I personally use HDMI for my setup just because it's simpler and HDMI cables are cheaper to get the great quality because you don't have to pay a lot for them. Now with the other capture cards that I mentioned, the HD PVR is limited to just component and that's why I never made the plunge into buying it. And with the Blackmagic Intensity Pro, the problem with that is that it requires so much power to actually use. I don't want to do a RAID setup, I just don't have the space in my computer case and I don't have the funds to you know, get that many hard drives and string them along together. Now another thing that affects input lag is resolution. It's always recommended that you play on your monitor display's native resolution to get the least amount of input lag. Again, it won't be zero, every display naturally has some input lag, but you're cutting down to the minimum. Now the problem with the Blackmagic Intensity Pro and the Hoppage HD PVR is that they both only record and accept up to a 1080i signal. Now this doesn't work for me because I've got a 1080p monitor and most everybody I know has a 1080p monitor or a display. They don't make 1080i displays anymore, so it's either you're going to be doing 720p or the 1080p. So this presents a problem to competitive gamers because you can either downgrade the quality of input uh, to your capture card to 720p and just accept the increased input lag, or you can do the 1080i, which I, I wouldn't really recommend anyways, or a lot of gamers have been getting a lot of different accessories to allow them to scale the image so they can play in 1080p and scale down to 720p so they can capture that. Now, the problem is that these converters are super expensive on top of nearly $200 spending for your capture card itself, and if you're getting the Blackmagic Intensity Pro, you're spending even more money on your state-of-the-art computer with the hard drives and everything. The costs just add up. Thankfully, with the Avermedia Game Broadcaster HD, we can bypass the necessity for those converters and everything and have a simpler, cheaper setup. Now, everything I've just described to you guys is regarding live stream capturing. But a lot of games offer theater mode capturing, which basically allows you to go back and view the different games that you've played on your system and just basically, you know, press play like a VCR. Now, you can just go back to your theater clips and record those with your capture card, and then you don't have to worry about a lot of these problems. But for those who are live streaming, they are going to run into these problems. And I would recommend trying to record live gameplay versus theater gameplay for two reasons. One isn't the biggest deal, but it's something that takes me back to a couple years back because I used to capture back in the Halo 2 days when there was no theater, but one of the things that we were able to do is that you could hear the people's voices in your clips, which really added a lot, especially during those funny moments. Now the second, and I think more important reason to do live stream uh, capturing versus the theater capturing is pretty much new to Modern Warfare 3, at least noticeably. I have used the Halo Reach and Halo 3 theater modes and didn't really notice it, but going from Black Ops to Modern Warfare 3, a lot of people can uh, vouch that the netcode has diminished in quality. I'm sure that you guys, if you played the game, you've heard somebody shout lag compensation. Basically what you see on your screen isn't what's actually happening, which is it causes a lot of problems like if you've ever run around a corner when you saw an enemy and you think you've made it around that corner but you still die it's because of this lag compensation according to the enemy you didn't actually make it around that corner so they were able to kill you so when you go back to your theater clips and you watch these it's actually showing what happened with all the different connections and the gameplay looks off it's just like either you notice that you know you have delayed reactions and you think to yourself I thought I got to that guy faster than I did or it's just really weird and choppy, especially if you're in a yellow bar game. When you go back to look at it in theater, it looks really weird with like slow-mo or freezing parts. Therefore, if you do a live stream recording of what you want to capture, you have a more accurate representation of what actually happened in that game from your point of view. Now the Game Broadcaster HD does have a few problems with it. Number one is I think that they're just missing an important accessory, and that's an HDMI splitter. Now, I know that they have the three different options for the uh, inputs, 
I'm basically just naming HDMI because that's what I use. Now, the capture card doesn't include a lag-free pass-through or any pass-through at all. So basically, if you're going to plug your system into this capture card, that's the end of it. I mean, you can full screen the program that you're capturing, like the preview, and then you can, you know, see the game like you were playing on your TV, but it has really bad input lag and it's really just unacceptable for gaming, so you can't do it that way. Now, for my personal situation, since I capture an HDMI, I just needed a HDMI splitter to allow me to split the signal, so I have one HDMI cord going into the splitter, then another HDMI cord going into my monitor, then the other into the capture card, so then I could have no input lag at all. I could play on my monitor and capture at the same time. So the HDMI splitter that I purchased cost $20. So if you were to get the Game Broadcaster HD and the HDMI splitter, or the VGA splitter if you can find one in a similar price range, you're still under the price of the Blackmagic Intensity Pro, and you're at around, and you're at around the same price as the Hoppage HD PVR. Now the second problem I have with the Game Broadcaster HD is basically just understandable limitations. Now you can take in a 1080p 60 frames per second signal with the Avermedia Game Broadcaster, but you aren't recording at that. You're recording at 30 frames per second. Now if you go back and watch this in like VLC Media Player and you watch your gameplay of like Modern Warfare 3, you can definitely notice a choppiness to the uh, motion of everything because it's half the frame rate that the game was actually meant to be at. Now, if you're live streaming, it honestly doesn't matter. It will look the same when you're looking through the Justin TV or Twitch TV window. It's not going to be noticeable. And some could even argue the same for YouTube. But looking back at the full resolution movies, you can definitely notice it, at least in my opinion. So what I ended up doing was, if I were doing live stream capturing, I would play in the 1080p 60 frames per second and just take the frame rate loss when uh, streaming or capturing my clip. And if I were going to capture my clips in theater, I would dial back my Xbox's resolution to 720p so I could get the 60 frames per second. And as far as video quality goes, I've decided to give you guys many different uh, versions of the Avermedia's produced clips. I have uploaded full resolution movie files that I've just encoded a WMV, so links to that are in the description box below. And I've also got some links to another YouTube channel of mine, it's one that I'm going to start putting gaming content on, so you can see what the Avermedia Game Broadcaster's uh, videos look like on the HD screen. And finally, I've also recorded some clips. I've streamed some clips onto Justin TV at different resolutions and frame rates so you can see how it actually looks. So you can see that 30 frames per second doesn't really matter in that situation. But to me, when I was using the Avermedia, Media, the video quality is really great. I thought that the quality looked nice and crisp. I mean, I started off using a Dazzle Platinum. Uh, capturing from a VCR back in 2006 and 2007. So going from that to this is a great uh, quality bump and I didn't have to spend a lot of money on my setup or my computer in order to run things. I mean how can you argue against playing in 1080p while capturing in HD? I mean this is cheaper than even playing in 1080p and capturing in standard definition if you were to use any other kind of setup because the converters that you would need to buy would surely uh, be beyond the cost of the Avermedia game broadcaster. So all in all, I think that future streamers are going to be screaming a new product brand name when they're asked about capture cards, and that brand name is Avermedia. This capture card is great. The cost is great for what you can actually do. I think that it's going to give Black Magic and Hoppage a run for their money, and I think that if you guys are looking for, if you're in the market for a new capture card and you don't want to sacrifice playing at 1080p, but you also want great quality, but you also don't want to spend $500 for your setup, I would not hesitate for a second to tell you to go with the Game Broadcaster HD. So if you are interested in the Game Broadcaster HD, you can actually look them up. They're selling their product on Amazon, or you could go to avermedia.com and check them out. So that'll do it for my video review of the Avermedia Game Broadcaster HD capture card. As always, if you like this video, please hit the like button, leave me a comment, and subscribe to my channel as I'll have a lot more great content on the way. And if you want to get in contact with me at all, it's easier than ever. Just contact me on Twitter at MLGSteggy or like me on Facebook at Facebook.com slash MLGSteggy. So, once again, this is Steggy with a video review of the Avermedia Game Broadcaster HD. And until my next video, I will catch you guys later.